Uh oh, where's the camera? Why isn't there a camera? You guys can hear me, but you cannot see me. Why is the camera not here? Why did I not check this beforehand? Why many things? Integrated camera. Uh, where's the camera? Here, camera. What in the bahookies? Well, guys, let's start today with some with some uh, some problems here. Um, interesting. Let's close that. No, I don't want to close that. Well, it might just be a black. Oh, there it is. There we go. There we go. Well, now let's get it pointing the right way. What happened there? And the and the color is off, and the light. Oh boy. This is just a. We're having a hoot here. Bear with me a minute, my friends. We got to make life good again. Uh, well, life was good anyway, but we got to make it working here. All right, there we go. Apply. Okay, and okay, and we're back. All right. Oh, still a little low. Little, little, a little high, a little low. Okay. Good morning. Hi. <laughs> yep, that's how it goes here. That's how it goes here. Good morning. Glad you're here with us for a little time in God's Word on this Friday, the 13th. Woo! Um, yeah, not something I get too carried away about. In fact, the 13th is usually a pretty good day for me, Friday the 13th, because Jesus, you know, that's, that's how that is. That's how that is, and that's how that goes. Um, so yeah, yeah, Friday the 13th of, of, uh, the, the, the big month of January, right? We start right away in the first month of the year. We've got a, we've got a Friday the 13th. So, um, let's see here. Oh, now the fans kick in my computer because we got video. Let's see who's here with us on this, uh, kind of, well, once again, an overcast gray kind of day here in Wisconsin. It's going to be kind of interesting to see. Um, when we get to the end of January, how many days we had with sunshine, how many we didn't. I remember, I remember living, uh, living in Michigan, like it was, the, it was 2018 or 19. And we went from January, the first quarter of the year, January through March. And I want to say Mark Torregrossa said in that 90 day window, it's not exactly 90 days, but that 90 day window, I think he said we had, had, uh, something like eight days of sunshine or something. Um, Wisconsin's usually not this great. We usually get a period of sunshine every week, um, but this 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 week is not turning out that way. Michael, good morning. Thirteenth, yep, Friday the thirteenth. Off today, chilly for the next two days. Yeah, we're getting colder too. We're supposed to be low temps starting now. Um, Mushtak, good morning, good evening. Geraldine and Neil, good morning. Jerry, good morning. Uh, fireman directing traffic on 53. Hmm. Yeah, it must have been. I wonder, was it cold enough that you had a little icing on the road or something? Or did just something stupid happen? Um, well, we hope, we hope and pray that, that nobody's injured. Um, Connie, oh, whoops, Connie, Robin, good morning to you guys. No sun in Harshaw either, huh? Okay. You think you'll have sun later? I, I'm not confident on that. It's one of those days in Wisconsin that's a Friday, and maybe it's a good day to go to a fish fry tonight, just to pick up the spirits a little. Ashley, good morning. Going to Perkins, all right. I used to love going to Perkins. I used to hang out at Perkins in the middle of the night when I was a, when I was a teenager. Then that In that window where um, they changed the drinking age here in Wisconsin, and so... Uh, some of my older friends would be hanging out in the bars, but I couldn't go. So some of us just went and drank coffee all night at Perkins, which is probably not a good thing. Um, certainly didn't help with sleep, that's for sure. Ah, so good morning, Ashley. Here's Bonnie. Supposedly cold or low 20, but no precip. Yeah, that's that's what that's what we're hearing. I, I'm, the weather service is giving me 16 for a temp right now. Verna, good morning. Uh, Renee, good morning. There's Ann and Devin Grant. Good morning to you guys. And Leela. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I'm going to refresh here one more time just to, things were kind of jumping around on me a little bit and make sure I've got, uh, uh, 
uh, yeah, and uh, uh, let's see here. Oh, yeah, there's a lot. Uh, Jill and John, good morning. Kelly, good good morning. What? Uh, drag myself out of bed. Okay. Um, yeah, Jeannie and Bob, good morning. Yeah, and it is Jean-Luc's birthday today. He is 27 today, I think it was. Four o'clock in the morning, like 27 years ago, uh, he was born, and I had a migraine, and the doctors wouldn't give me anything, not even so much as a Tylenol. Um, so, yeah, yeah. So, good morning. Let's, um, uh, what are we doing? We're going to, yeah, we're going to delve into this. Let's get this book over here, over here. If you have the Lutheran Service Book, page 295, Daily Prayer for Individuals and Families, the Morning Order, that's where we... Uh, begin here each day. I have my treasury of daily prayer right here that has the same stuff. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalm today, Psalm 32, verses 1 through 7. Psalm 32, 1 through 7. Hmm, okay. Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord counts no iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. For when I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was dried up as by the heat of summer. I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not cover my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Therefore, let everyone who is godly offer prayer to you at a time when you may be found. Surely in the rush of great waters they shall not reach him. You are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with shouts of deliverance. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Yes. That is the true and most important understanding of being blessed. That in Christ Jesus, our sins are forgiven and we have life in him. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord counts no iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. Well, um, the Lord counts no iniquity against those who are in Christ, by the blood of Christ. But it would be pretty hard to say that in the spirit of any naturally born living human being, there is no deceit. That would only be Christ. Then the, the psalmist goes into this section of, of, when I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all the day. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My strength dried up as the, by the heat of summer. And, and, and friends, friends, if, you, if, if, if you've ever um, had something that you're hiding from other people, especially a, a negative, but really anything that you're hiding from other people. That's work, if you understand what I'm saying. That's difficult. That's hard to do, right? If you're trying to hide a sin, that's it takes effort, and it's tiring, and it's a struggle. Confessing our sins and receiving forgiveness and thereby through Christ putting those things behind us, getting rid of them. That's not tiring. That renews and restores and reinvigorates, right? So uh, this is 
this is David. When I kept silent, when, when I held my sin to myself, when I, when I refused to confess my sin or even admit that I was sinful, my bones wasted away. And I groaned all day. And your hand, the hand of the law, was heavy upon me. My strength dried up as by the heat of summer. I was tired and weak. But when I acknowledged my sin to you, when I did not cover my iniquity, I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Life is restored. Life is made new, reinvigorated. Therefore, let everyone who is godly offer prayer at a time when you may, may be found. Let everyone who is, who is godly, who is seeking the Lord, stand forth and, and, and confess and receive absolution. For he is a hiding place. A preservation in the times of troubles. He surrounds, a, surrounds with shouts of deliverance. That's a good psalm. <laughs> it says here, additional Psalm 51, which kind of goes down the same, same path. Let's go on to our reading for today from Ezekiel again, chapter 36 now, verses 13 to 28. Um, we've had several days this week where um, God in the mouth of Isaiah is talking about the watchman. I think we're into something different now. Um, so uh, Ezekiel 36, beginning at verse 13. Thus says the Lord God, because they say to you, you devour people and you bereave your nation of children. Oh, therefore you shall no longer devour people and no longer bereave your nation of children declares the Lord God. And I will not let you hear any more the reproach of the nations, and you shall no longer bear the disgrace of the peoples, and no longer cause your nation to stumble, declares the Lord God. Hmm. The word of the Lord came to me, son of man, when the house of Israel lived in their own land, they defiled it by their ways and their deeds. Their ways before me were like the uncleanness, uncleanness of a woman in her menstrual impurity. So I poured out my wrath upon them for the blood that they had shed in the land, for the idols with which they had defiled it. I scattered them among the nations, and they were dispersed through the countries. In accordance with their ways and their deeds, I judged them. But when they came to the nations, wherever they came, they profaned my holy name in that people said of them, these are the people of the Lord, and yet they go out of his land. But I had concern for my holy name, which the house of Israel had profaned among the nations to which they came. Therefore, say to the house of Israel, thus says the Lord God, it is not for you, to, for your sake, O house of Israel, that I am about to act, but for the sake of my holy name, which you have profaned among the nations to which you came. And I will vindicate the holiness of my great name, which has been profaned among the nations and which you have profaned among them. And the nations will know that I am the Lord, declares the Lord God, when through you I vindicate my holiness before their eyes. I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the countries and bring you into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water on you and you shall be clean from all your uncleanness, uncleannesses. And from all your idols, I will cleanse you and I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you. And I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and be careful to obey my rules. You shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers and you shall be my people and I will be your God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Shut up, phone. Go away. We'll talk to you later. Um, hmm. Interesting, huh? What did you hear? Well, the first part, it's kind of dark to me. 
God says, because you devour your people and you bereave your nation of children, therefore you will no longer do these things. And I will not let you hear any more reproach of the nations and no longer bear disgrace to the peoples and no longer cause your nation to stumble, declares the Lord God. So I, 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 I'm not, I don't know. I don't know. It's not clear to me. This is clear to me. The next part. Um, when, when Isaiah says, the word of the Lord came to me, son of man, uh, when they lived in their own land, they defiled it. And, they, and uh, by their ways and deeds. And their ways before me were like uncleanliness of a woman in menstrual impurity. That's in in the sense of the of of, of the law and the scriptures. Um, that's pretty bad. Um, so I poured out the wrath upon them for the blood that they had shed in the land, but for idols, which they with which they had defiled it, and I scattered them among the nations. Now Ezekiel is prophesying. Uh, of the of the Babylonian captivity and the events therein. So um, I can't remember the dates here. If if Ezekiel is after the northern kingdom has been destroyed, um, so you're going to have to bear with me a little bit on that. Um, but um, the the point of this passage is that is that the, the people of Israel, and when I say Israel here, I don't mean the nation, I mean the, the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and especially Jacob, right? Jacob is Israel, and his 12 sons become the nations of Israel. So they are the Israelites. Uh, and, and they are set apart from the rest of the world, the rest of the people in the world, okay. by God to be his people. Um and yet, when they come into the other nations, they profane his holy name. Um, and people look at them and they say, these are the people of the Lord, yet they go out of his land. Um, I have often said, many things are not about the thing, but about the witness of the thing. Now, let me... Let me clarify that for you. Um, and Paul does this a little bit too in his gospel when he talks about, in his gospel, in his letter uh, to the Corinthians, I think it's 2 Corinthians, um, that as Christians, we have Christian freedom. We have the freedom to do nearly anything we want. Um, with that's pleasing to God. We have freedom to do things. And, and some of those things, some of those things might be okay for, for us. Um, but for a weaker Christian, they might be confusing or difficult or cause them to stray. Um, or some things we do that we think are right, which are not, um, might confuse others. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do this in a sensitive way here, but it's the witness of those actions, right? Um, there are, there are things that there are, there are, uh, there is a, hmm, I don't want to say this. Yeah, Bonnie, Bonnie says, spit it out. Um, there are, there are, well, in, in the time of, of Paul, he talks about eating, specifically eating meat that's been dedicated to idols. Well, we know that an idol is nothing. So any dedication of meat to an idol is nothing. And so eating that meat is not a problem for a Christian, right? Except if a more juvenile Christian, and I don't necessarily mean by age, but by faith. If their faith is weak, then um, Paul calls upon people to be sensitive to those so that they aren't offended. And to not give the impression that you're eating meat that you believe has been sacrificed to an idol 
um, and and so you believe in the sacrifice to the idol and the eating of the meat. So abstain from the meat, abstain from eating that, from eating meat dedicated to the idols. Um, I, perhaps in our day, um, there are some denominations that are strictly against the consumption of any alcohol, none whatsoever. Um, Christians don't drink. Well, that's not true. In fact, Paul writes to Timothy and says, take also a little wine. It's good for the digestion. And the psalmist tells us that wine is for the, for the joy of man, for man's joy. So, but we don't abuse it. All the things that God has given us in the world, we, sometimes I call them or the, the, the Lutheran understand of these things is, is God's, um, uh, God's good gifts that he's given us. They're all for us to use um, and to enjoy, right, for our pleasure. But we can abuse them. Um, and if if one is able to enjoy them without abusing them, but, but they are in the midst of a people who um, can't enjoy them without abusing them, uh, then the sensitive thing is to abstain, right? Out of love for the brother, so you don't confuse them. So if you're... You're, if you're in a if you're in a group of alcoholics, you don't order a whiskey, right? It, it, it's being sensitive to the brother. Um, now this goes beyond that, though. There are the, these people um, who are Israelites, who are people of God. This is one step further. Um, they say, and we see this today. They say they are of Christ, or they say they are of people of God, and then they do things that are ungodly. And what's the witness? Ah, now we're on to something. I've got something for you now. Um, Christians who, who promote, condone, and encourage abortion. Uh, week after next is National Right to Life Week. The march in Washington is taking place um, against abortion. Um, you can't on one side say, I am a Christian and believe in God and the promises of God and the promises of Christ Jesus and eternal life. And I, and I uh, seek to obey God through Christ and then say it's okay to kill um, unborn children. And I'm saying unborn children. Um, those, those are, so you say this, but you do that. And that's what the Israelites are doing. They're going out in the nation, and people are saying, well, these are the people of God, and they're going out there, and they're bad-mouthing God by their witness, by the things that they are doing. Um, again, the world is filled with sin. All have fallen short of the glory of God. There is no exception. The only one who is righteous is Christ. Christ himself said the only one who is good is God. And so we do sin, but we seek God's forgiveness and we seek to be steered away from sinning by the Holy Spirit and to be called out of our sin. Uh, and, and, and as difficult as it is for us to hear, when we sin, we want to, we, we really do want to have that sin pointed out so that we can repent and turn from it and be faithful to Christ. And our witness should be the same thing. When we sin, um, we don't anchor our our our, our uh, we don't anchor our life in that sin, but we we anchor our life in Christ. And in what we do in our life, we are not saved by works, right? But God has given us works to do from the foundation of the world, and those works we do uh, in the name of, for the sake of, and through Christ. Um, but we, we desire, or we ought desire, in all things to give a faithful witness to who our God is, what, what his expectations are, and how we live our life properly in him, seeking forgiveness, repentance, living a life of repentance. That's what, that's what Luther says. It's really what Paul says, but Luther 
Luther takes it further in his writings, and he and he and he teaches that the the the, the life of a Christian is not um, one day of repentance and baptism and a Sunday morning of confession and repentance, uh, or when you go to the go to the pastor to talk to him and, and he realizes what you need is confession and absolution. It's not just those moments, but the life of a Christian is led continually in, in repentance and sorrow over sin and a desire to do better, seeking God's forgiveness. That's the witness we get, that we aren't perfect, but God makes us perfect. God restores us. He, he is the refuge uh, to which we flee. The Israelites have gone into other nations, and, and their witness is that they're no different than the world around them. Other than God, they bear God's name. And for that reason, as they've worshipped idols and um, all the other unclean things that they've done, that, that God is condemning them for them, they have, by, by that witness, they profane their holy name. They profane, profane his holy name. Um, think of it this way. The acts of a child reflect on the father. The acts of the people of God reflect upon God. We want the witness of our lives to reflect upon our God in a positive way. And it's not our salvation that's tied to this, but it's the confession of our faith. I, I read a little something here earlier this morning um, where the man was talking about the danger of um, things that Christians say that might not be construed in the best and most faithful way and how those can be used against us by our opponents. That's what God's saying. Israel was living in a way that profaned his name, that, that, that uh, didn't in a, in a positive light reflect back to what God had done for them. And so punishment comes upon them. But he says... But he says, after he says all that, he says, Therefore say to the house of Israel, Isaiah, thus says the Lord God, It is not for your sake, O house of Israel, that I am about to act, but for the sake of my holy name, which you have profaned, profaned amongst the nations. I will vindicate the holiness of my great name, which has been profaned. And the nations will know that I am the Lord, and through you, when I vindicate my holiness before your eyes, I will take you from the nations, I will gather you from all the countries, and I will bring you into your own land, and I will sprinkle you with clean water. That's baptism. This is the promise of Christ. This is the promise of baptism. I will sprinkle you with clean water, and you shall be clean from all your uncleanliness, and all your idols, I will, of all your idols, I will cleanse you. From all your idols, I will cleanse you. And I will put in you a new spirit. I will give you a new heart. I will remove the heart of stone that profanes God and turns away from him and goes on sinning. And I will put in you a heart of flesh that I will sustain by my Holy Spirit. And I, I will cause you to walk in my statutes and to be careful to obey my rules. That's what Christ does. When I retain my sin, my bones waste away, and I'm in agony. But when I confess my sins, when that fleshly heart in mine reaches out to Christ and says, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my inequities with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. For these I am most heartily sorry. And we seek the the gift of, of God's grace in Christ Jesus. And that new spirit in us strengthens us. We move forward day to day. And we give witness to the forgiveness and grace of our Lord who has saved us from sin, death, and hell. And who has acted to vindicate his holy name through his son and in the hearts of his believers. Amen. Our prayer of the day. O oh Lord, keep your family, the church, continually in the true faith, that relying on the hope of your heavenly grace, we may ever be defended by your mighty power through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. 
Amen. Our, um, we continue then with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, born, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. Thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. And we are bold to pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. What am I doing next? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Prayer book. Prayer book. Prayer book. Prayers for ourselves and others on this Friday the 13th. God of all grace and mercy. The rising of the sun, the drawing of breath, the place where I live, the enjoyment of family, friend, and food are all gifts from you. And if that were too little, you have given me even more through the death and resurrection of your beloved son, Jesus Christ. You have given me everlasting salvation and a place with you in your kingdom. Give these same gifts to all people. Let them see your daily provision. Let them hear the good news of the gospel preached. Allow them to receive mercy and grace in the outstretched arms of Jesus, who was high and lifted up on the cross for them. Help them to confess your saving name and boldly and confidently do so. Heal the sick, deliver the afflicted, strengthen the weak. Care for the lonely, the persecuted, and the oppressed. Restore the lost, Give faith to the dying, comfort the grieving, and in my own moments of sorrow, grant me a heart willing to cast my care firmly upon you. Lead and direct my life this day. Purify my thoughts, cleanse my sins, guard and keep me from every temptation. Make me faithful in my daily responsibilities and help me walk in faithful obedience to your commandments. And let me continue to grow in your wisdom and grace. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, and we're doing prayers for vocation too, aren't we? I almost forgetted that. For those who are unemployed, or the prayer of those who are unemployed, dear Father in heaven, righteous in all your ways and kind in all your works, thank you for creating me and preserving me to this day. You know my needs and my fears because of my present unemployment. Comfort and strengthen me and help me to maintain my hope and courage. It is clear from your word that work is good for all people, yet I have not found work that I need and seek. This situation is hard to understand. Help me, Lord, to surrender wholly to you and to look to you for the employment I need. O oh Lord, correct what is wrong with me or with the employment situation in general and allow me to earn my living. Open a door to employment that I do not yet see Keep me from discouragement and bitterness and help me to put my trust in you. Help me to say with a believing heart, the eyes of all look to you and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. Make me trusting and patient in that knowledge and in that faith. In the meantime, care for me and my family according to your promise. I trust you will do so for the sake of Jesus Christ, my Savior in whom you have promised to give us all things. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, be also with those who suffer, whether it be in body, mind, or soul, the, the effects of age or illness or tragedy. Be with those in the areas of Alabama and Georgia as the fierce storms and tornadoes tore through those areas last night. Remind them always that Things can be replaced and that those who suffer can always find grace and comfort in you. Be especially with Pat and Lois, Anne, Brianne, Rose, Bob, 
Mike, Megan, Dan, Ezra, Neely, Jeremy, Ashley, Cora, and all those who call upon your most holy name. Strengthen them, O Lord, for service to you, for patience and waiting, and for comfort if death draws near. Give wisdom to their caregivers, their doctors, and all who care for them. Grant us all a modicum of your mercy through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to be create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, my friends, that closes out our devotions for today. 41 abortions in Sanilac in 2021. Well, that's not good. Um, 41 infants murdered. You know, if you read it that way, 41 infants murdered in Sanilac County in 2021. Puts a whole different perspective on the whole thing. Um, you can't undefine, you can't make something not murder by legally defining it as not murder. Enough of that. God's peace be with you, and we will see you back here tomorrow, Saturday morning, for our daily devotions together. God's peace.